Hi there, Wigglover. This is Heather from Hair Kitty Kitty, and I'm wearing Charisma in Molten Copper R. I wore this one all day at work today, and it's after work now. I've got this lovely Moscow mule, and I figured I'd share this time with you because something in the ether told me that you might be kind of stressed out. I'm feeling that too, and I figured we could hang out together. At my day job, here, I'm going to take a sip real quick. At my day job, I... Um, I've found that I have basically become the go-to person whenever anybody is stressed out. <laughs> they come to me and they talk to me and, and they ask me, you know, how do you deal with this? How do you deal with that? And I had no idea that I was like, you know, a guru when it came to dealing with stress because I've never particularly considered myself good at handling stress. Um, part of that's just because I have PTSD and I also have autism. So, you know, if you've ever hung out with somebody with that magical combination, we're, we're prone to for lack of better words, tantrums, you know, like I kind of short circuit once in a while and lose the thread and kind of go, ah, <laughs> so I'm very, very um, comfortable with saying that I'm pretty stressed out most of the time. But I noticed that, you know, other people were recognizing the fact that I have pretty strong coping mechanisms for that. And I'd like to share some of that with you, tell you you're not alone in this. And, you know, if anything, I think it's pretty common these days to just be really, really really stressed out, even if you don't have an underlying condition or two like I do. It's kind of the day and age that we live in. It's the nature of our media. It's the nature of the, the way that content is delivered. For example, I don't know about you, but autoplay on streaming apps really, really stresses me out. I feel like I'm under the gun to pick a video to watch. So even recreation is stressful. I feel like the phone is constantly blipping and blooping and telling me I haven't completed everything I need to complete for the day because there are a ton of messages waiting for me and a ton of emails that need to be answered. And I have multiple email inboxes. I mean, do you live that life too? Where it's like, there's no escape. If you ignore your phone for a little while, you get people coming out of the woodwork going, I tried to get a hold of you or, Hey, did you get that thing I sent you? And it's like, you can't just have time and space in your brain for yourself anymore. It's like the world demands that you're on call 24 seven for all of its demands and all of its needs. And even friendly interactions require instant responsiveness as if everything is an urgent matter. And with me, I combat this by putting up pretty rigid boundaries about when I look at the phone, when I answer my emails, I, I have it all kind of plotted out on a calendar to manage my time so that way I don't feel the temptation to do everything all at once because I feel like that's a trap because if you try to do everything all at once, you just feel like you're underwater all the time. And the other thing that I've really learned to embrace is that sensation of not completing everything. Like I've learned to embrace incomplete things, which is not really my comfort zone. Um, I don't know about you, but I've always been the kind of person where if I start something, I always want to see it all the way through to completion. And I've learned as an adult that I have to make peace with, you know, sometimes life happens. And as long as I keep plugging away at it diligently a little bit every day, I'm okay with that deadline getting pushed back as long as it's not something that needs to be a high priority. And usually it's the stuff that really needs to be a high priority that makes those other deadlines seem to slip away. And I realized that this was kind of um, something that not everybody was accustomed to because one of my coworkers, he is a wonderful human being, just wonderful, a veteran, uh, has a ton of integrity, uh, wonderful personality, super, super smart, really funny, but he's just, he's got this really insidious imposter syndrome that he deals with all the time. And it just makes it so he's in his head all day long. And so whenever anybody tells him that, you know, they need something from him, he jumps on it immediately without realizing that not everything's a four alarm fire just because someone else wants to make it one. That, that that's where you need to maintain some control in your life. Otherwise, you're going to feel like your life is out of control because that's modern life. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's, it's constantly going to demand things of you and it's up to you to decide whether or not you're going to give it. And you have to, you have to take that control because otherwise you won't have any room in your life to live your life. 
And I'm saying that from experience, you know, because of the fact that I have a day job and the fact that I have a business and I'm making content on the side. It's like I have three jobs and you have to find the joy. You have to find a rhythm. You have to have some level of control over the, the rhythm of those things. Otherwise, you won't get to any of them. And it's the same thing if you're a mom with active kids and you have a job or, you know, you have really engaging hobbies or you have to take care of loved ones. Let's say you're like in a sandwich generation. You not only have to take care of kids, but you also have parents or loved ones that you have to take care for, uh, take care of. If you are a caregiver, you constantly, like you could probably say this message better than I could about how it's so important to preserve some mental energy, space, and time for yourself. Because if you don't, you will run yourself ragged to the point where you can't function. I think I heard a survey earlier this week, um, and I can't remember what the source was. It may have been Pew. But somebody did a survey basically saying that one out of every four Americans says that they are so stressed out that they can't function. And that's across age groups. Like, this was a recent survey. And that is so incredibly sad. There's two sides to this because on the one hand, you have to remember this is self-reported. So it doesn't mean that those people genuinely can't function. It just means that they feel that they can't function, which I still feel is very valid, right? Like if they feel that stressed out to the point where they would answer that way on a survey, that's still something that should raise alarm bells, that there are lots of us out there that are struggling and we need to look out for each other. But I think the other side of that equation is there's probably a, a pretty hefty percentage of people in that group who genuinely can't function, who genuinely struggle to hold down a job, who genuinely struggle with addiction, who struggle, you know, just, just to do the, the things that are put on their plate for everyday life. And if that is you, I want to urge you to not keep that to yourself. Reach out and talk to people about it. You are not going to be an imposition. And if somebody treats you like you're being an imposition for mentioning that you're struggling, that's a terrible person and you need to find somebody else to talk to. Because anyone who genuinely cares or has empathy just, you know, for, for other people in general would want to know and would want to at least lend you, you know, an ear for a moment or two so you could get it off your chest and maybe they might have suggestions for you. And the other thing that I would like to caution against is just pure venting. I don't think that pure venting is necessarily very constructive for the person listening to the venting or the person who is venting because that behavior in and of itself, when it's in a bubble and doesn't come along with anything constructive, can be toxic. It's just like, you know, misery loves company. It's spreading that misery around, you know, you're spreading that negativity to somebody else. It's perfectly natural to have negative emotions, but I think that what's more important is to make sure that you're always keeping, you know, your mind open to the fact that when you are mentioning that negative stuff, someone else might come up with some advice, some ideas. They might want to challenge your um, assumptions of that situation to try to reframe it in a way where you can actually do something about it or do something with that sensation to help work your way out of it. So I'm going to take another swig of this. It's delightful. And I, started thinking about this because I just started to observe when I came down with, you know, C19, that I was, I was out. I was completely out. I could not work. I could not, I couldn't function because I was so fatigued. I had, you know, just this terrible brain fog and worse, I had these terrible chest pains and I'm still dealing with those chest pains a little bit. So this is an incredibly weak Moscow mule. <laughs> it's mostly a, a flattened ginger beer at this point. But, you know, I still get to go through the motions and have my fun with it, even, even if it's not really that strong. Um, but anyway, that's the thing. You got to find the little things that bring you joy. And when your body tells you to stop, stop. And when I had COVID, I had to, I had to take a backseat. I had to stop. And I started to realize um, when I came back to work, uh, particularly at my day job, that a lot of my coworkers were really struggling. And I found out that it's because they were kind of relying on me to be their cheerleader. You know, they were relying on me not only to do my work, but, but to make their day brighter. And that makes me feel really good. And it shows me that those people need help figuring out how to provide that for themselves. 
You know, it's not that I don't want to do that for them. I'm perfectly happy to do so. And I guess I was just doing it without even realizing it. And that's pretty consistent for me. When, when I first got my first job out of, out of college, I was immediately recruited to the fun team <laughs> because I, I just wanted to say hi to everybody. And I wanted to make sure everyone was having a good day. And I always, you know, would bring in cookies and cupcakes. If you were on a diet, I was probably your worst enemy, but you would still like my cupcakes anyway. <laughs> that sort of thing. And, um, I, I don't know. It's just kind of something naturally that, that I do. It's like if I see that somebody's in pain, I want to help them out. And there's one of my coworkers in particular who's just really struggling because he's dealing with a lot of like really intense imposter syndrome. He's very good at the job. He just doesn't realize it. And so again, he's like his worst enemy. He, he's beating himself up all day long. And then he comes to me and I'm like, dude, it's not like that. It's like this over here and you are perfectly fine. And if you need help, let me know, right? And I didn't realize how much that mattered to him. I didn't realize what a difference that made. And as soon as I came back from um, my time off of work, he was the first person that called me, <laughs> you know, and was telling me about what was going on with him. And by the way, he's, he's not like a dramatic person. That's the irony. This is someone that's very stoic naturally. This is a, a, a veteran who uh, was in the army for a really long time. You know, he's in his 60s. This is not like a young person who, who doesn't know how to cope with the job. This is somebody who is just in a position that they're not familiar with. They've been on the job slightly uh, less long than I have. And they just need somebody to tell them everything's going to be okay once in a while. You know, when, when you're in over your head, when you're stressed out, when life is stressing you out. And that's, that's the other thing I found out talking to him that uh, it wasn't the job. It was the fact that he's going through a lot in his personal life on top of the job stress. So just having that positive interaction every day that wasn't about work, wasn't about, you know, what was going on in his home life, was just, you know, happy chit chat and, you know, a little pep talk meant a lot to him. And so I thought about that now that, you know, the week is over for me because we get Veterans Day off. I'm thinking of him because that's his day, you know, to honor him. So I'm toasting to Bob. Bob, this is for you. And I wanted to share the thing that I shared with him. And that's that if you need somebody to talk to, find that person, you know, and even if all you do is talk about, you know, a Marvel movie or a really great recipe for fudge, just, just find that person, right? Because they're rare and they can make a big difference and keep your eyes open in your life, in the world around you to the people who need that. And if you can be the person to provide it to them, try it. You know, because sometimes we all need a distraction that pulls us out of our heads, gets us into a, a different space, you know, encourages us to go touch grass once in a while and then come back as someone who has needed people like that in the past and enjoys being that person when I can. It's very important to just not close yourself off to the opportunity to make somebody else's day brighter, right? and not to pass the opportunity up to ask for that if you need it. We live in a very individualistic society here in the United States where, you know, it's almost like a stigmatized sign of weakness if you ask for help. And that is a very lonely way to live. We need each other and it's okay to let each other know once in a while. So I'm going to toast to you too. And I'm going to take another swig to your health to your happiness. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will try to make content a little bit more regularly as time permits. We're still trying to figure out the rhythm with the wig store and with the day job and everything. And I'm thoroughly enjoying both. It's just a matter of figuring out how to make it all work. And I've come to this place, as I mentioned at the beginning, where I'm kind of Zen about it. I realize that I get more done when I'm not trying to do it all at the same time. And I'm just going to keep chipping away at it till we get there. So thank you very much for your time. And I hope that you have a wonderful, ugh, I can talk, wonderful night. Bye, everybody.